tab about what that means? Sure. I'm, I'm going to pass out something that, that we use that says um, um, action, law, penalty. So it, it'll pretty much break down any situation that you'll encounter, but let, let's go to cars. Um, what the legislature did was they said if you have marijuana in a car, it's a $500 ticket. It's a lot of money, right? Um, marijuana is broken down into um, amount, age, and place. William's right, you can't possess it if you're under 21. So I don't think anybody here is 21, right? No. But in a car, if you have it and the officer asks or finds it or smells it, you as the passenger, not just the driver, if you have an open container of marijuana, what's an open container? Anything, because we can't sell it right now, we meaning the state of Massachusetts, because there aren't any recreational marijuana points of sale, right? You can buy it for medicinal purposes. There are actually two places in Somerville that are open right now, one's in Davis Square and one's on Lowell Broadway, but you need a medical marijuana card to buy it. So um, that's the only packaged marijuana we have. Anything else is out of a package, in a car, $500 fine. The thing about marijuana is it depends on how old you are, right? If you're 21 or older, you can possess it. But if you're 18, 19, or 20 and you have it, it's a $100 fine. However, if you're under 18, it's a $100 fine, four hours of, of a drug education class, and 10 hours of community service. Yeah, and if you don't do all those things, mommy and daddy can get hit with a $1,000 fine. So not only is it, the legislature really doesn't want people under 21 to have marijuana. Yeah. William. So I know in New York, they have this thing called stop and frisk, and basically a police officer can go up to a random person and you know, stop them and check them, just you know, just for curiosity. Do you guys do that by any chance? Just stopping random people and checking them if they have anything on them? Um, I'm not gonna repeat the question because we're in a small enough room here. Everybody heard it, right? I don't need to repeat. Mm -hmm. Everybody get it? Uh, we can only stop and frisk if we think that you have a weapon. So if we think you have marijuana, we cannot. If we think you have marijuana, we can ask you, and if you admit to smoking, we can give you a fine. The same fine, the same $100 fine. And if you're under 18, the same four hour drug class, the same 10 hours of community service, because with marijuana, internal possession counts. So we don't have to find it. We don't, if we see bloodshot eyes, if we see evidence that you smoke, smell it, you admit to it, um, that's against the law to vote. Stop and frisk is only for weapons. Yep. And the other thing with marijuana is, and I'll answer your question too, is, if, um, if we come up to it and we say, you know, uh, say we see you smoking a joint or somebody and they're not 21, they're under 21, we say, what's your name? Mickey Mouse. You know, what can we do, right? We can actually arrest you for giving us false information. So, um, you know, do we do it? You know, we try to use discretion, right? We don't want to throw people in jail. We don't want to get people in trouble. But we also want to obey the law and, and, the, and the legislature believes that marijuana is, is not is not good. They legalized it, but they really think it's bad for um, for people under 21. So get out David on it. Yeah, I give the David. Give out your buddy. Um, Go ahead, Anya. Is it if you're caught like over twenty one smoking marijuana in your house, is that legal? Um if you're caught over twenty one smoking marijuana in your house, you can smoke marijuana in your house. As long as your landlord says it's okay, landlords can can prohibit you from uh, smoking, growing, uh, cultivating in any way. But um, but if it if that's not there, you can smoke in your own house. You can't smoke you can't smoke in public. So although it's legal for over 21, you can't walk down the street and smoke a marijuana joint. Um, and if you do, it's a hundred dollar fine. Um, it's given on a city ordinance. It's not on a um, you know. But it's a hundred dollar fine, so you can't smoke in public. And if you choose to smoke in a park, playground, uh, skating rink, housing project, housing you can, project, guys, you that one. Yeah, you can also be charged with violating a city ordinance. Cities can make their own laws, and we in Somerville have an ordinance that says if you smoke in those places, it's a three hundred dollar fine. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so uh, I was listening to your previous statement about the black white eyes, the small marijuana. Um, so just just like like, is there? Uh, I, don't, I don't know how to phrase the question. So let's say that you do have bloodshot eyes, and it does smell like it, but it wasn't you as an individual. Can they test you for like level of THC? Like, is that something they can do to just like to prove? Yeah, that's point? a good question. Can we test? Uh, right now, we can't, um, and they're trying to figure out what to do because what we're really concerned about is people who who do drugs and drive. Right? Yeah. With alcohol, it's pretty. Easy. You know, we give you the breathalyzer, do a low. We know your level, but with with marijuana. There, there isn't a test yet. There are tests where uh, they can go in and take a, a, a swab and, and check your saliva, put it in a machine, and then we can tell the level. But Massachusetts hasn't regulated it, we don't have it. So right now it's really, it's really kind of up in the air. And in fact, when you get stopped for drinking and driving, we have three tests that we do, and I won't mention what they are, but they're, they're te they work, there's percentages. You know, if you fail this one, you're 79%. Um, likely to be under the influence, but what the legislature has said is, you can't use those tests and say, just because someone fails them, you're under the influence of marijuana. So it's a really tough situation right now for law enforcement and for uh, drug driving. Anya, I'll, I'll write you guys down. So, Anya, go ahead. Uh, so it's legal to smoke tobacco and cannabis in public? Not cannabis. Really? Yeah, you and can't in marijuana. public. You can't smoke marijuana in public, anywhere. But I see, I see. Yeah, you that's see. That's why we're having this conversation. That's exactly. Walking down the street, and you can, you know, you can smell it. I can smell it when I'm out in the morning, and people go by in a, in a car. You can always tell it's cop. Yeah, I go, you know, because it's so strong. Yeah, it's smoke. You can smell it as it goes by. Um, but no, you can't smoke it in public. Only indoors. And right now, the city's trying to regulate. We're going to open um, mar recreational marijuana stores, and we have to open a certain number. It's actually 20% of the number of, of uh, package stores here. So there'll be at least six stores in Somerville that'll, that will sell marijuana. And what the, what the mayor and city hall is trying to do is trying to figure out where they're going to go through zoning and what kind of regulations, you know. And, and also, are they going to let marijuana bars open where you can go in and smoke in a facility. Right now, you can't smoke marijuana in any place where tobacco is prohibited, which is public buildings, libraries. So that's a given. But the other thing is kind of up in the air right now. A lot of private stuff involved in that, huh? Yeah. You don't have to be own property or something like that. Yep. Uh, I had uh, Carolina and William. Did I, I think I missed a hand, Jill. John. Um. Oh, I'll get to it. We got you. I got you. Right. Too. I got a Carolyn and William John. I used to do the the walking around, so I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. Old yeah. friends. Yeah. Um, so like before marijuana was legal, like people were sentenced to prison in jails if they if they possessed it, right? So after um after marijuana was legal, were those people free? The question is about uh, people who were before the laws changed, what happened? Did they go to jail? For the most part, you could get arrested for possession of marijuana, but the courts didn't really treat it very very seriously. Um, so no one really went to jail for any extended period of time unless they were trafficking in marijuana. And trafficking in marijuana meant, meant 50 pounds or more. So the people that had bales of marijuana that were selling it, those people might do a couple of years. Uh, but as far as people being let, uh, let go, um, they didn't. They didn't go retroactive on, on the marijuana thing. Uh, they did in, in a certain way, but if you already were convicted and you were doing something, then they wouldn't go back and change it. But what they did say was, "Hey, we don't want a marijuana conviction to mess up your life, right? Because whenever you go for a job and they see that you've been convicted of some kind of drug offense, you know, are they gonna hire you? Probably not. They're gonna hire the person that doesn't have anything. The legislature said, now you can go back and you can seal those records." So you can go to court, and no one can ever see them. So if an employer looks at your criminal history, it's not going to show. Follow-up um, question. Yeah, follow up. yeah. Doesn't that uh, cost a lot to seal records? I'm not sure how much it costs, but you would need a lawyer, mm -hmm. and it would cost. Yeah, it's whenever you go to court, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a different system there, mm -hmm. different language, different gravity. Hopefully, you never go there yourself, but 
but you pretty much it's hard to do anything there without a lawyer. And lawyers, for the most part, is two hundred dollars an hour and up. Yeah. Uh, well, you only get public attorneys when you're charged with a crime in which jail is a possibility. So say you go to jail, say you, you're arrested and you go and you stand there and the judge will be up there and he'll say, this, this crime does not, uh, does not carry a jail sentence. They won't give you the option of a public defender. So you're on your own, you're paying. Thank you. Um, just <laughs> earlier, you just said when you get out the house and there's a car pass by, you could probably smell, you know, the marijuana. So I was wondering if it, since you're a cop and someone drove by not under the influence of marijuana and but their car smell when you stop them, mm -hmm. would they get in some type of trouble because their car smell? Well, what we're trained to do now is if we smell it because of the open container of marijuana, we can stop it. Before we could, we couldn't do anything. What the training is now is stop it, and then if you believe that the person is impaired, then get them out and do, um, do test it, right? Make sure that they can, you know, walk a straight line, hold the foot up in the air, follow instructions, and if they can't, then they get arrested for OUI drug. Um, if, if I stop somebody and they seem to be able to communicate. I actually stopped somebody just a couple of days ago. And when you rolled on the window, it was you know, really <laughs> strong. And I said, do you have marijuana? And he said, no, I don't have any here, but look, I have a medical marijuana card. And he showed me his card. And uh, in, in talking to him, I could tell that he was able to answer questions appropriately. And he didn't seem impaired. So I didn't get him out and do the test or anything. So, um, so I, I even forget what I was answering. Yeah, did I answer it? You did. Yeah, Very good. Yes, did. Did. Uh, I had John and David. Yeah. So um, yeah, you, just, uh, you just said one of the three um, ways of testing the sobriety test, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so my follow-up question was um, basically because you can't. So when you differentiate uh, someone drinking alcohol and driving versus someone smoking weed and driving, um, and you said you guys can't technically test anyone, but you, you, you just said that one of the tests is to do a sobriety test. Yes, we do so the same. You do, so you guys use the same. The same ones, test. and I'll tell you what they are. One is we move, we move something across your field of vision and we wanna see if your eyes can follow it and, and what they do then. Because you can't really control the muscles. Um, you know, if you're a heavy drinker, maybe you can, you know, the functional alcoholics, they drink, you know, a case a day and you can't tell, you know, because their body gets used to it. But with mu muscles, you can't really fool us. So one of the tests is to follow a stimulus with your eyes. And the second one is to walk a straight line. And we, it's a nine step thing. And we watch how you walk, whether your feet are together, whether you can follow instructions. Because the thing with alcohol and drugs is it impairs your ability to multitask. When you're driving, you gotta use the brake, and you gotta use the accelerator, you gotta drive, you gotta signal. All these things, it gets tough to do if you're under the influence of something. So that's what we're seeing. And the third one is we had you stand there and we had you raise your leg and hold it there for 30 seconds. If you can keep it up for 30 seconds, you pass. If you put it down, if you sway, if you hop, if you use your arms, those are all clues um, in which we can fail you in. And with marijuana, marijuana is kind of funny in that what it does is, um, if you see somebody who's smoking marijuana, usually they, they have eyelid tremors. So what we'll do is we'll tell people to stand, put your head back, close your eyes, and we'll see. Um, and, and estimate the passage of 30 seconds. Marijuana slows you down. So if after 50 seconds you say, okay, that's 30, I'm gonna say, hmm, something's up. But we also watch to see if, if you have eyelid uh, tremors, if you're swaying. Um, and the other thing with marijuana is uh, you have a hard time crossing your eyes. So we'll say to you, okay, you know, follow my finger. Uh, and if you can't bring your eyes in and they, and they won't cross, that's a clue to us too. So there are things we can do to see if someone's under the influence. So, uh, <laughs> follow up, I John's got a follow-up. So my thing is, uh, you, you, guys, you guys are doing that. I heard that um, in each state or around this country or like some, some of the states they're hiring individuals to run these kinds of tests for, um, for only like marijuana, like for just for this, um, not for like, just not using the same kind of test, you know what I mean, that you use for uh, drinking. Um, I heard they like hiring individuals, is that true? Um, 
other states might be doing it, but Massachusetts is a fairly, um, it's, a, it's kind of different. We have the, we have the toughest gun laws. Uh, we're, we're fairly liberal. We don't do that yet, and I don't see that in the near future. Okay. Um, it, in fact, what, what's strange with driving under the influence of a, a drug versus alcohol is with a with alcohol, uh, well, alcohol, we can take your license away, and we can make you do or offer you a, a breath test, and if you refuse it, you lose your license for 180 days. But it will go on your record, though. Uh, it, will go, it will go there, it will say breath test refusal, but you, if, you, if you beat it at court, you know, it won't be there. I mean, it will be there, it will show. But with drugs, right now they treat it in a way that we don't take your license. Um, it, it's really, it's not treated fairly, you know, and so they're trying to, they're trying to change the laws to, to get ready for what's coming. Because in Colorado, when they legalized it, Colorado was one of the first places that did it, they saw uh, drug driving cases shoot up significantly. So we're trying to get ready for the, for the same thing. And we have specially trained officers that are called drug recognition experts. And if we believe that someone's under the influence of drugs, we call these guys over and they do a 12 step test and the final step is they take urine, and then we send it to the hospital or the state lab, actually, and, uh, and test for it. So, so I, got, uh, I got a couple ones I'll get you on there. Jay, I have uh, David, Doug, and Jay. Um, <coughs> These are great questions to this. <laughs> so if a minor is found like um, around like people that are of age, but not smoking, are mm -hmm. they also like included in the charge, or are they like? Not really, unless we have some reason to believe that you're, you're smoking, you're fine. Um, so if you're with somebody that is, you know, don't freak out unless unless you reek or have bloodshot eyes. Don't stop running. You're okay. Your question. Um, I got uh, Doug, Jay, then Isaiah. It was the same question. Oh, good. It's, it's a good question. Let me. Uh, all right. Uh, you good, Doug? Want, you got one other one? Um, the third test that you talked about, um, balance, uh, like one foot up, right? Yeah. What if the person just doesn't have good balance and they yeah. just fall? Yeah, some people don't. So they're not, yeah, they're not, you know, sometimes I have a hard time doing it, right? I mean, it's hard. What the test is, you stand there and you put one foot up, right or left. You know, I'll ask people, do you have, do you have a problem with your knee or something? They say, yeah, my right knee's bad. So I say, okay, you know, stand on your left leg, put it up six inches, point your toe, keep your, see, even right now I'm having a hard time. Put your arms down by your side and, and watch the tip of your toe and count 1,001, 1,002. I it's, it's hard to do. But just because you put your foot down once doesn't mean it's, it's a failure. Actually, if you do twice, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two down, yeah. So you have to do that, and that's difficult, but, but that test is only about 68% accurate. So we do three tests. If you put all three together, you're clocking in at about 93%. The eyes. The one, the walk and turn for nine steps, and that one leg stand. So, all three of those together, you're pretty much on. But I've seen people. I saw one guy down six beers in the span of about 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I was sitting there in my cruiser. I had an unmarked cruiser, and I watched him. And I thought he's not going to drive. He's not going to drive. But he sat there and he drank his six pack, and then he took off. This was on Cross Street, and I pulled him over, and he passed all three tests, even the high one. Yeah. So I didn't let him drive, but I couldn't arrest him for o OUI either, because because he passed my test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't arrest him either. So, yeah. I got a uh, who's uh, Jay? You're next. Jay, then Isaiah. How many people a week do you stop on average for suspicions of being under the influence of marijuana? Mm. Okay. How many people do I stop per week? Right now, um, personally, I'm, I'm in a cage. This is deputy I'm chief guys. Office. I'm in an office. <laughs> so what I do is every morning I do one hour out in the street. Um, it's not common to stop people for, for marijuana though. Um, maybe a little bit more. And I can tell you that because I see the tickets that come in, the $500 tickets. Not to say that everybody's gonna get one or a hundred, you know, if, we can use discretion, we don't need to do it, but some people deserve it, right? So it's kind of, it's up to the officer, but it is more frequent. It's happening more frequently now, but still not a whole lot. So a lot of times it's like that guy at the park when there's kids there, it's like, 
Come on, you be, you're yeah. Being, yeah, you know, not, not that guy hidden someplace. It's like you're kind of being. Yeah, a you can use a lot of officers to say, you know, come on, or you know, take take the kid home, or you know, we're not here to make life more difficult for you because because we know what it's like to be uh, young. You know, you do things that aren't. You know, your brains are developing, and you do things that you normally wouldn't do. So we we try not to mess people up, but. You know, if you're dealing drugs, one thing about marijuana is if you sell it, that's arrestable. So that makes you a dealer. Um, selling is bad. Yes? If you have more than a, if a person has more than a certain amount, would you automatically assume that they do uh, If a person has more than a certain amount, will we assume, yes, in that amount? Uh, well. You, you need something more, kind of a plus factor, but the way it works is they break it off into an ounce, right? So if you're 21 or older, you can have an ounce, no problem. If you're under 21, you can't have any amount, right? Because it's not, it's not legal for that. Between one ounce and two ounces, the law says, take away the excess, give them back their ounce. If it's over two ounces, then we take everything and we can charge you criminally for that, more than more than two ounces, so you can have two, and just and you're over 21. So, like I say, it's really confusing because it all depends on how old you are, what you're doing, are you selling, are you giving? Are you, and I'm going to give you this sheet. Actually, maybe I'll pass it out now. About how long is it the same one or? Oh, you do. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, good. All right, that that kind of breaks it down. A, a lawyer who does everybody? I have a bunch here. So. Everybody has that sheet. Yeah. It says what happens, what's the law, and what's the penalty. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, Isaiah, so you have a question, right? Oh, yeah. I'm going to throw myself on the gym. Um, so, if, uh, so you said um, the, in public projects. Like right there, um, you said that in that area, in that property, inside the public um, project, there are a lot of smoke with the land with the Wow, that would be interesting. I, I don't think you can smoke in a public project because the landlord is the federal government, right? And the federal government says, we don't believe in any of this stuff. You know, we think it's it's illegal. So I think no matter where you are in the project, you're in trouble if you're smoking. Mm -hmm. I can give. Uh, so my my brother, who used to, who's now a police officer, um, used to work with uh, homeless kids, and he, one of his biggest clients were 18 year olds kicked out of the projects for smoking cigarettes. Now I'm talking about marijuana, cigarettes, because you it's no smoking period. So people get kicked out and become homeless for smoking cigarettes. So yeah, same exact thing goes for marijuana. You may find a lot of homeless kids because of that, which is a tough thing to figure out. But uh, yeah, it's a very much like a zero. And they try and find ways to, the waiting list for Section 8 guys to get into the projects is so big, they try and find ways to get people out. So if you violate, you're out. I mean, a lot of the kids, if Stephanie was here, she could tell you a lot of the kids she grew up with, they all got violated out for minor infractions. Because that list is so long, if you violate it, they got to find someone who's not going to have a violation to keep them in. Um, so yeah, that's kind of uh, the reality of it. Uh, Deputy Steve, I had a question too. Um, sure. I, I I know when they when the they first said the law, you, you talk about the thing about the one ounces and two ounces. Yeah. Now for someone like me, I'm obviously over 21 and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but when that changed, didn't it though? Because first it was just one, and now two. That just I get a little confused with that one because I'm like, okay. okay, so sure you can't okay. or you can't. Well, yeah. You know. Everything is honestly, it, it's really confusing, and it's confusing to the officers too. I go to roll call and I, I try to break it down and help them, but. Here's what it is. You can have an ounce if you're over 21 in public. And an ounce is a fairly big amount. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. Kind of a big baggie, right? But anything over an ounce, you're not allowed to have. And we are, we're supposed to take it away. Now, how I'm supposed to tell you have an ounce and a quarter, you know, uh, and then remove the quarter, it, it's virtually impossible. They didn't think about this, you know, when they created the law. Yeah, so what you can do, there, there are a couple of options. Um, what they tell us to do is take that, if you think it's over an ounce, because you can have an ounce, over an ounce, take it to the station, weigh it up, take off the overage, that is assuming it's under two ounces, um, take off the overage, 
and give them back their ounce. So the police right? can actually give you back your pot. They could, but there's a case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's this another, a, there's another uh, school of thought that says I'm giving him back his pot. That makes me a drug dealer, right? So Ooh. the other thing is oh, there's no money involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, but I'm still I'm 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 handing over drugs, you know. So there's there's a case in Colorado that says, you know what? We don't have to do that. We're, if we take it, uh, we're gonna weigh it up and you know we're gonna keep it off. We're not gonna give it back to you. They're, they're looking for test cases now in Massachusetts, but um, and then over over an ounce um, gets you a hundred dollar fine. And then over two ounces could be deemed criminal. But for the most part, you know, the 78%, I think something like 78% of the voters in Somerville said, hey, we want we want recreational marijuana. So, you know, the, the courts aren't really uh, treating it that harshly, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I got um, David, and I have another question. Oh, David. You know, this entire time, I was just thinking, so you guys take the weed, but what do you what do you do with it? <laughs> is, is it just like there? It's small block. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's why I brought Debbie Steve because he can bring a great deal of humor with this too. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. What do we do when we take that weed? You know, if you're under 21, we can take it from you. Yeah, I mean that's we can do that too. We don't have to give you the ticket. In fact, that's often what we do is we take it. We say, hey, you know, you can't take, and we turn it into evidence. And then it sits in the evidence room, and let me tell you, the evidence room stinks. I mean, and if you get anywhere near it, you can just, it just reeks. And then they take that and they drive it up to the state lab in Sudbury, and they put it in this big bonfire thing and just, up oh, it goes. Yeah. That's a good question. That's a good question. Um, Deputy Steve, so one, one of the ones I find a lot, a lot, a lot what's happening with some of the kids too is if they have, uh, you know, because I think a lot of the adults with like, an adult is more likely to have an ounce. You know, a kid might be more likely to have four grams in four different bags. Yes. So say I'm a kid and I'm hanging out and I'm smoking weed at Harris Park and I got four grams in my pocket separately. Yeah. What's that? What, what's, and, you know, what's that type of, that, that's, a little, that's a little different, isn't it? Okay, that's a plus factor. So we weigh all this thing. So you got four grams and you got a scale too. You know? oh, yeah. oh, well, now we're thinking, you know, individually packaged, maybe your money's arranged in a certain way, you know, the, the, the way the drug dealers do it. Then we say, hey, that's, that all adds up to drug dealing, you're under arrest. So you might have what could be just something we would find, an amount we would just fine you for, for $100, and maybe send you to a drug class. But if it looks like you're dealing, you're under arrest. Yeah. So it can look like you're dealing, though, even if, say, you're just a person who decides to buy 15 individual bags, yeah. and you decide to keep those, that can still, Get you in trouble for dealing, even if you're yes. for your personal consumption. It right? could, and the, and the way we work is we work off a kind of a scale, and when it hits 51 on that scale, that's good enough for criminal. You know, it's called probable cause. If you hit, if it's zero to 50, we say, oh, that's not probable cause. That's not more likely than not. But once you hit that 51, we say, hmm, yeah, and then, and then it's it's the court that figures it out. We say we have probable cause that. That damn, you're a drug dealer. We're gonna place you under arrest, and then it's you know, then it's a problem. You know, then it's it's court time, which is not good. Let's take John, and then maybe I have two more questions, and uh, before we wrap up. Yes. Just the scale. Um, just how an individual bag is each grain bagged up, um, and you guys ask them, yeah, ask the individual, uh, you know, why is it all bagged up individually? Yeah. Um, they said they received it. Uh, which you know money that was involved in it. So what is that? So someone gifted you? Yeah, basically. Gifted you? Are you over 21 or under 21? Oh, over 21. Maybe. So you received a gift with no money. Um, you can actually gift marijuana as long as it's less than an ounce. Right. <laughs> over 21, guys. Again. Over 21. Over 21. Just like I can give John a bottle of alcohol for Christmas. Right. Yeah. That's, the legislature said that's okay. Um, and, and basically, we're... You know, if we believe you, you know, because some people say, hey, look, you know, I just, I segregate it because I like to do an, uh, a gram a day or whatever, you know, however, and that's why it's in these baggies. I don't sell it. It's just my own personal use. If we believe you, you're good to go. Yeah. If that, adding that, adding that factor of the scale, we need that, like, that's Yeah, when, when you start looking at scales and other things and, and money and...
behavior, you know, the meaningless ride, you jump in someone's car, and then you jump out a half a block later, uh, pair that with individual packaging and a scale, and now you're into, you know, handcuff time. Yeah. yeah. Now, now uh, for at homes though, like so, so say you know someone can have at home. What if they had a scale at the house? Uh, scale at the house? <laughs> yeah. Um, like kind of what you were saying. It's like, it, it kind is that of, legal or? Well, you can. You know, you can. If you're over 21, you can grow. You can grow marijuana, and and each plant can net quite a bit of, of marijuana. Yeah, up to 10 ounces per plant. Oh, wow. in, in some cases, if someone's a really good grower, so just. But what the law says is, is six plants per person. Of, you can have up to 12 plants per residence, is what it says. What's a residence? You know, I don't think the law thought about Somerville and three families. Multiple families, right? <laughs> yeah, you got three residences, so that's, you know. And your six, mom lives on the first floor, right. you live on the second floor, and your brother's live on the third floor. None of that's figured out yet. <laughs> what you can have, you can personally possess six, your girlfriend could have six. So 12 plants in your house, as long as it's your residence, your primary, that's no problem whatsoever. And you might want to have a scale there because, hey, you want to know how much how much you're getting off that plant. Am I getting two ounces or am I getting 10? Am I a good grower or, or do I suck, you know? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, guys, uh, one or two more questions. David and uh, I'll do it with, uh, Isaiah again. So uh, uh, we'll wrap up unless we have any questions. <laughs> so I've seen that you can agree on plants. Can you all sell it to the state? Can you sell it to the state? <laughs> no, th that's, that's a very real thing. Yeah. When you tell the states, so cultivation, like can people sell to the dispensaries and the? Well, we have, we have dispensaries. I was on the medical marijuana board to pick the, we actually gave the okay for five different places to open up here. Two in Davis Square, one in Union Square, one on Broadway, I forget what the other one was. But of those five, only two were able to get it together. A third one's gonna come online. They have their marijuana grown in in places out in Western Mass, um, big places. I mean, huge grow farms, um, and they are licensed. And every every seed is tracked. I actually went to a number of places. I went to the there's a dispensary in Salem, and uh, it's almost like McDonald's. You walk in and you take a number and you go to the counter and you tell them what you want, and uh, it's all in cash because the federal government says uh -uh, on credit cards and checks and. So it's a, it's a cash business. And they're supplied by these places that are, are really, you know, they're tracked. Um, but uh, we're gonna, you're gonna see more of it. We're gonna have more dispensaries in Somerville and we're gonna have at least six retail uh, stores as well, maybe more, depending on what City Hall says. Yeah, so did anything stop you from having like a mom and pop, like, reach out, like, if you, like, would you have to get like yeah. go to the state and then they can stop you from that point on? People want that now. Um, I went to a meeting the other night. We had our first meeting on recreational marijuana facilities, and people want to do. Um, they want to grow in the home and supply stores, or and, and it's pr pretty much up to the city to decide what they want. You know, um, with growing marijuana, you need large, uh, large amounts of light. You know, artificial light, which means lots of power, and that's dangerous because it can create fires. And if you try to, if you try to make something like the edibles, or you try to distill the, the oils, the THC, the, the part of the plant that causes you to get high, um, some of the methods for doing it, it's kind of like freebasing. You know, they use alcohol, and it can cause fires. And last year, the year before, a firefighter was killed in New York when he responded to a, an apartment, and it, it blew up because that's what they were doing there. They were, they were extracting the oils and getting 70 and 80 percent THC out of a plant. You know. Uh, I have Isaiah, then Carolina, and then uh, we'll probably close out after us unless someone has any burning questions. <laughs> William, I, I guess you're the one. I want to make sure you guys get all the information you can. Don't forget, too, if I'm going to leave you my information, you can always reach out to me. You can email me. You can call me. Um, uh, it's a judgment-free zone. Honestly, I'm here to help you. Um, I didn't tell you my opinion on it because that's not why I'm here. I'm going to stay in my lane and just give you the facts. So if you're wondering about what you should and shouldn't do, you know, don't get in trouble. Just reach out to me. No problem whatsoever. Uh, let's go. Um, it's uh, Carol Isaiah and then uh, Carolina. So in those recreational places, um, so if an employer tries to snatch um, marijuana secretly, but if a civilian ca catches them or a coworker catches them, do they have the right to do that, or like call the police? Uh, well, I can, I can, I can't speak. This is recreational places. Are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Because the. Uh, the medical marijuana uh, places, 
they count seeds. I mean, they they weigh in, they weigh out. Um, it's probably going to be a little looser with the recreational, uh, but theft is theft, right? So if you if you uh, suspect that an employee is is stealing, well then that's when we get the call. So uh, unknown at this point what's going to happen. And uh, yeah, um, if uh, say that you are a marijuana smoker but you don't have a license, and then you go to your friend's house and he's also a marijuana smoker. And he's allowed. He allows you to smoke for marijuana in his house, and then it's in their house. And they have, do they have still have the right to smoke marijuana in one ounce as well? Okay, so two marijuana smokers and one goes to another one's house. Um, the thing I said before is so many variables here. You could be under 21 and, and be able to smoke marijuana. You could be 15 and be able to smoke marijuana if you have a marijuana card. Um, they, you can get one at 15. I'm not saying you should get one, but it's possible. So I would have to ask more questions. Do they have, are they under 21 or are they 21 um, or over? Let's say they're over 21. They're over 21, no problem. You can go to your friend's house and smoke and, and he, can, he can give it to you. He just can't sell it to you because any kind of sale outside of the state where they're gonna make 20% tax on it um, is illegal. So, but giving, yeah. And you'll see some funny things where They'll say, hey, come and buy this, uh, this grow light, and if you buy it, um, we'll throw in a, a free quarter of an ounce, right? Mm -hmm. So technically, they're not selling you that quarter of an ounce. They're, they're giving it to you with the sale of a, a grow lamp or uh, But it, uh, the law sees through that and says, uh-uh, you know, we see that as a kind of a backdoor sale, and we're not going to allow that. Mm -hmm. uh, Carolina, last question? Uh, no, it's all covered. Anyone else? Last one? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my last question right, is no. um, my last question. So now that um, it's rec recreation usage is like not guaranteed, but pretty much like in the books. Like, how how are lawmakers gonna approach that when thinking about like um like people in cars? Pe well, not people smoking in cars, but the the small cars and like people walking down the street because like they're like areas for like smoking tobacco like are there going to be areas for marijuana usage i don't think so i think the the secretary of uh of um e -ops, i can't think what it stands for but except, uh, public safety um uh, the secretary of public safety has said we don't ever want to see it um outside in public anywhere if it's going to be allowed it's specifically designated um, bars or places or indoors, but you should never see it, even though you'll see it and you do see it right now. I mean, I run through Harvard Square and I go by the pit and that, yeah, it's cool. you know, and I see, you see it here in Somerville, I, I see it too. Um, so I don't think they'll ever sanction it, they'll ever allow it, um, but you're gonna, you're gonna see it more and more. And July 1st is the date, so um, they set up this, Cannabis Advisory Board and this Cannabis Control Commission, and they're all just—they've got until July 1st to get to get the laws and the, everything together. So pretty soon you're going to see it a lot. All right, guys, let's give a round of applause for Jeffy Casino. a minute before we leave is uh, first I want to thank you guys all for listening having really really good questions uh, I hope you got some good answers out of that too and just remember uh, just like Debbie Carabino said uh, he's here he's a resource for you lovely is a resource for you Lisa is a resource these are all resources that are here for you if you want to have any follow-up questions uh, can we give a round of applause for someone cares about prevention for their presentation <laughs> grateful to have the partners in on this. I uh, thought you all had excellent questions and I hope yeah. you became more knowledgeable on this subject. And like we said in the beginning, it doesn't, and, and Deputy uh, said it just a minute, a minute ago, it doesn't really matter how you feel, whether you're voting for it or not, it's here. And there's information, there's knowledge, and there's resources that you guys have to know and should know just to help yourselves, help your friends, and just be aware. Uh, the more knowledge you have, the more power you're going to have.